G'day scrappers, welcome to uh, depopulating mid-grade slash peripheral boards. Um, basically mid-grade board is what we call them here in, in America and stuff. They, they might call uh, mid-grade boards uh, peripheral boards. Um, so basically they're uh, obviously a higher grade than uh, your low grade and the most common kind of boards we get like even say for instance in a DVD player you might get a little low grade board and you'll get a little uh, mid grade board basically a, a green board uh, with uh, IC chips but a not a lot of uh, uh, transformers and dead weight uh, one very common one is say from modems uh, uh, a lot of people get a, can get a lot of modems from time to time I certainly do and so that's a very common uh, mid-grade board or peripheral board if you like um, so the reason why I'm doing these depopulating videos at the moment is for all those people that don't have anywhere to uh, sell their boards to be honest uh, mid-grade boards you're, you're mostly you're much better off um, selling your mid-grade boards to a board buyer but uh, say for instance if you're here in Australia it's very hard to find a buyer unless you're here in Melbourne um, where you can sell your mid-grade boards to me for me i sell my mid-grade boards i don't completely depopulate because i've got a an avenue obviously to sell sometimes i might pick out uh, uh say an ic chip or a flat pack out of something like that and still keep it as a mid-grade board um uh, yeah in in other cases like this is just on the edge of uh, a mid-grade board more leaning towards a low grade board because these are all just transformers and dead weight um, but it does have quite a few IC chips and uh, not much dead weight here so this just goes as a can go uh, as a mid-grade board but if this only had one chip on there and, and all this this would be a low grade board regardless in some cases some people will cut this part off and sell this as a you know mid-grade peripheral board and this would go as a, as a low grade board so uh, yeah so I just wanted to show you guys that uh, don't have anywhere to sell your your actual boards and especially if you're here in Australia you could uh, depopulate and sell the flat packs IC chips and other bits for gold recovery and I certainly buy all that kind of stuff uh, you could either post it to me you'd still get much more uh, value than throwing the board into a scrapyard or the other option you've got is to actually sell this kind of stuff on eBay uh, so flat packs in half kilo bags or one kilo bags um, or in in the states pound bags um, and you find that uh, you'll get pretty good um, good value from people that are looking for um, things to uh, recover gold from and another option is to go on to like Facebook and there are gold recovery pages on Facebook there's a big community there um, and you know you'll probably find someone more local to your area where you could ship them uh, stuff and uh, they'll p probably pay you a fair price um, so they can do the gold recovery for themselves so Oh, yeah, I'm just going to go through a sample of uh, boards and uh, just show you what we can depopulate from the boards and obviously at the end we're going to be left with uh, still a, a blank board that uh, you might still be able to take to your scrapyard and sell as just a low grade circuit board or just throw them into scrap steel uh, th things like this this is like a like a kind of like a low you know a, it's a it's a back plane board but um, it's not like your higher end back plane board. So we just put these kind of things into mid grade. And yeah, you do have the option of removing these plugs, exposing the pins, cutting the pins off. And you could also sell me the pins, but uh, the only thing when selling gold pins is they've really got to be sorted out. And you say so you want your high, you know, fully plated gold pins separate to your mid, which is partial gold and then you're very low which is only like little tips of gold so let's just go to the table and uh, just uh, show you the various things that I buy or people would buy um, on eBay or uh, gold recovery guys on Facebook and uh, we'll start depopulating okay so just wanted to go through quickly some of the 
the items that we do pick off the boards and uh, what I actually buy. Uh, so we'll start off with the, the cheapest stuff which is crystals and crystal oscillators. Um, so they come in various shapes and sizes and well there's all kinds. So this is your basic uh, crystal oscillator. Um, this one happens to have gold legs. Um, you got your little crystals, uh, very common on all kinds of boards. And uh, and the tiny little flat crystal. So these are basically just for silver recovery. So uh, they're really not worth a great deal. But um, then you got like what are these called? Like transistors and stuff. Uh, so they've got like their little round things and all shapes again. If they've got gold legs or gold bases, I will pay more for these ones if you separate them. Obviously, I'm not going to sit there and pick out your, you know, which one's a gold base if you uh, mix it all up together. So even things like that. So it's got uh, gold legs, gold base. So I will pay higher for these kind of things. Um, uh, but basically um, the most common like crystal oscillators are these four-legged type and uh, these kind of ones and so they're not worth much they're only like two dollars twenty a kilo or so because uh, uh, it just depends on how many you had and, and stuff if you had uh, quite a lot but usually uh, people bring me such small quantities that it's hardly even worth weighing up um, so it's up to you uh, definitely the ones that have got gold bases and so on um, can pay more for them so that's just your crystals a very basic one a lot of people don't even uh, bother taking them off the boards these days because they're just so low value um, uh, same with me I rarely pick them mostly off low grade boards but when I do see the gold transistors and so on I do take them so they're the crystals and crystal oscillators but the real the real good one is uh, the gold band crystal oscillators so these little things here, maybe we might find some on boards. Um, here's a really big one, so it's just got a, a metal top with a gold band running around the side, um, and then a ceramic base. And uh, um, in this, some situations when you're trying to uh, take them off the boards, the uh, metal top will break off with a bit of ceramic. Um, that's okay, so long as um, you know, within the uh, the batch, say the little tub that you bring, um, all the 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 actual crumble and the the, the actual ceramic part has got to be included. Um, obviously, if it's just metal tops and you leave the most important part on the bottom of the board, um, you can see here uh, is a good example where the metal top was broken off, uh, but this is the ceramic part you can see the nice little gold in there and so I you know if there are a lot of uh, metal caps I expect quite a lot of uh, the actual ceramic at the bottom of the of your little tub and so these are really good um, good for gold recovery for anyone or if you're selling to me here in Australia I'm paying about hundred and five dollars a kilo for this they, they have, most of them are very tiny and they take a long time so uh, to, a long time to build up a kilo of it anyway so uh, you know but uh, certainly worth it and then we obviously got things like MLCCs um, I've got a, a set price for just mixed MLCCs uh, obviously if you separated non-magnetic to magnetic um, the non-magnetic would be a, a totally different ball game, uh, a much better price. But generally, uh, it's usually all mixed stuff. So the, a, a lot of the very magnetic stuff is only base metal, so it's not worth a lot. So, um, but MLCCs are another thing we take off, and uh, also 
this type of MLCC, which you find on uh, a lot of boards, um, mid-grade, certain ones, especially uh, older boards, and then higher end boards. Um, so yeah, just got to be sure that they are actually capacitors and they are MLCCs, but uh, these ones are, are very good. And uh, I usually pay equivalent to a non-magnetic MLCC, so uh, a reasonable amount. Um, I will put my price list in the description. And then obviously we've got tantalum capacitors um, of all types, mostly the common ones. The little can canned uh, are really hard to determine, so keep them separate. But uh, yeah, your regular tantalum capacitors, we should find some on some mid-grade boards, hopefully. Um, resin dip ones, the SMD surface mount square, yellow and black are very common. So tantalum capacitors are another thing that I buy. And then it comes to the uh, different types of IC chips and chips in general. So our, our basic ones are your regular dips. So IC chips with legs on two sides. Um, yeah, they can be quite small or quite large. Um, so this is your, your entry level IC chips. They come off pretty much everything. Um, there are um, plastic and ceramic versions. If you did have uh, find a lot of ceramic IC chips, keep them separate because I do pay a bit more for the ceramic alone. But when they're mixed or just IC chips, um, yep, so these are uh, around $13 a kilo, so um, again, it depends on what they look like and how many you had. If you had a real big bunch, you know, uh, I might be able to do a little bit better, uh, especially if there was, if I noticed a lot of ceramics within it. Um, but yeah, so IC chips, uh, your basic ICs are still good for goal recovery hit and miss really so it's hard to tell but uh, even if they the, you take them off the board and they break in half and stuff that's fine the only thing is make sure that there is no circuit board still on the the actual IC chip some people just break it straight off the board and it's also got the circuit board make sure that's gone the other type of IC chip which is uh, I will pay a higher value if they're separated most people just mix them all up but these IC chips are your your memory IC chips and you'll notice them off the older style RAM and um, and then just about every you know many many boards will have these little flat ones and so we'll find some of them on boards as we start depopulating and then you got the uh, the EEPROMs which are the got the little glass window and they usually got a little sticker over the top and they're normally removable off the board they're just sort of stuck in there and um, the only ones that I'm really buying are the uh, the gold ones uh, if you have a mixture of them you won't get as much value for the gold but I still buy the silver ones so you don't notice what I call the silver ones is where you don't notice gold around the outside now there's a silicon chip in the middle and sometimes that can be gold a color that's not where what we're looking for it's just a, a yellow silicon chip it's it's around there we're looking for the bonding wires or in this case you could see there's a around the silicon chip it's gold so the gold ones certainly uh, uh, you get a lot better price uh, than the uh, silver ones silver ones are only about three or four dollars a kilo gold ones probably closer to eighteen dollars a kilo they are ceramic so they do weigh a bit so these add up pretty quick, but uh, you might find one gold EEPROM um, for every six or ten maybe silver ones. Uh, then the flat packs, what I call flat packs, are basically legs on four sides. If you keep these separate, uh, you'll get more than if they were with the IC chips. It just depends on the volume that you're doing, um, how how long you want to uh, hold on to them before you sell them, whether you're selling them to uh, me or selling them online. Um, they're definitely worth keeping separate. And you've got to keep in mind, some of these flat packs can be actual CPUs. Like well, here, that's an Intel i960. Uh, it's a board mounted uh, flat pack. So these would be better 
you know, obviously uh, better for goal recovery. So if you kept these kind of things se separate, um, uh, you know, like for me, I'd probably pay you a base level ceramic CPU price for them instead of flat packs. So you probably twice as much. Um, but yeah, so that's your standard. And then you got your BGAs, which are your, your higher level um, chips to an extent. So there are there is one type of BGA that I don't buy. Um, I'll show you that. So here we've just got a motherboard that I'll give you a, uh, an example. And this is one reason why uh, I mentioned before that unfortunately depopulating motherboard for most people is not really worth it because the things that I buy off here are basically just your chips and, and, and stuff like that. And as you can see on this particular motherboard, under this heatsink there might be a good BGA, but this is what I mean by the silicon top BGAs. You can see it's it's just got a silicon top on on there. It looks like it's kind of like a bit of a glassy cap on top of your green fiber. Now there is slight traces of gold, but these uh, for gold recovery uh, are very very low. I certainly don't even bother taking them off any board, and I don't buy them. They're the only chip that I don't buy uh, simply for that reason. And as you can see, there's not a great deal on this motherboard to depopulate. Uh, as far as you sure you got tiny little chips, but for the work and you'd need a, a thousand of them probably 10,000 of them to get a kilo. So um, You know, it's it's mostly all about the gold pins and so on, but uh, uh, these are hard to depopulate and so uh, unless you had like a uh, an air gun and um, you know just air gunned at all but it's mostly for personal gold recovery guys not necessarily for resale um, but uh, and you know to do it by hand just to remove all these pins you'd spend an hour on one motherboard and it's not really worth it. so it's unfortunate but it, again this video is all about uh, the people that have got no option so you would go for chips that I would buy um, and then you would probably yeah just try and sell this to a scrapyard as a as a circuit board so you're not going to get much value apart from any good chips that you would take off so they're the ones that that's the only uh, chip that I, I don't buy so the, the first stage of BGAs are these north south bridge kind of BGA chips um, gold corner um, yep, standard BGA. The only thing is that this top is a, a, a copper top. When you see these round circles, sometimes they're square, but usually round. When they've got a copper top, even this this uh, one here, it's a, um, a Broadcom. It's just a copper top. You can put them in with that kind of stuff. But these are your lowest grade BGAs that I buy. Um, they are a good one, but the only thing is they do have the copper, so it, the, a lot of the weight is in the top of the copper. So um, I can't remember how much. They're around $13. Uh, another version with a copper top are, are these kind of BGAs. Now, these ones generally come off, say, for instance, uh, slot CPUs, the old style Pentium 2, Pentium 3s. You also get them on uh, PCI cards. Uh, slot cards, graphics cards, uh, stuff like that, uh, especially from server boards. And um, these are actually uh, very good value uh, BGAs. And I pay, uh, I think uh, it's close to a black fiber CPU. So yeah, about twice as much as I would pay for these. And keep in mind, these are quite heavy. They do have quite a bit of copper on top, but they are... Uh, a, a, a good BGA. Then, obviously, the most famous BGAs, the ones that uh, everyone's sort of going for, is your your regular North South Bridge BGA gold corner chip. It doesn't have the copper um, on top, so so it's it's plastic. So there's less weight in dead weight. So these are a, a much higher value. Can't remember the price again something around $70 a kilo or so. Uh, so these are definitely 
uh, worthwhile, especially from mid-grade boards. Uh, it's definitely worthwhile taking off because uh, you'll get good value for them ones. And then probably the highest, uh, probably a, another $10 on top of that are the little BGAs without the gold corners. Um, these ones are your memory BGAs, so different to the memory IC chips. These also come on RAM and a lot of circuit boards. You usually get a row of four or six or eight. Um, and so they're only very small, but they're about $80 a kilo or so. Even the you know, slightly bigger ones you'll find on circuit boards. So these are a higher grade BGAs, mostly because... Um, they don't have the excess plastic um, like on these ones and so on and uh, yeah so yeah so they're the highest grade BGA's you can get and obviously BGA we mean because they've got little balls they don't have legs they're ball grid array so it's just little balls and they're stuck on a um, circuit boards like that and so we just pop them off and uh, yeah, so they're the ones and you definitely want to keep these separate to um, say these. If they were mixed, you would just get regular gold corner BGA. It's not a great deal difference in price, but uh, um, still uh, $10 a kilo is $10 a kilo. So that's the general mix of things that we get off mid-grade boards and above. Obviously above we got a lot more things. So. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, start depopulating some mid-grade boards and uh, we can talk more then. Okay, so mid-grade boards. Now, gosh, they really do vary and uh, like I said, pretty much most green boards that don't have uh, are loaded with transformers or anything like that. So here we go, we've got a, a mid-grade board and well, we've got a heat sink underneath a chip so we don't even know what chip it is yet. So. But that's okay because when we take off the heat sink um, you know we're getting the same price uh, probably uh, more for a heat sink extruded these days than we are for the mid-grade board uh, because yeah extrude aluminium is really good so here we've got a uh, a bga uh, one of the high end bgas it doesn't have the plastic so obviously that's the first thing um, will take off and so again um, reason why I do this is it's just depopulating for those people that don't have a, a avenue to sell these kind of boards so all I do is just a little flathead screwdriver and everyone's got different ways but just sort of I find this the easiest so there we go our high-end BGAs uh, similar to the little memory BGAs that you get on uh, RAM sticks and, and, and so on. So they're the highest uh, value f uh, that I buy anyway. Um, okay, so there's a tiny little one and they all add up. No difference, big or small. Tiny little BGA, you can see the little balls underneath good value now here we've got uh, two gold band crystal oscillators as I mentioned they're uh, about hundred and five dollars a kilo I'm buying them at the moment but with everything uh, obviously if you're selling uh, online or to uh, someone that's recovering gold um, you'll probably get even more um, and just depends where you are in some countries they just um, yeah, set price, they kind of pay quite good money. So there's our gold band crystals, you can see the ceramic underneath and once again if the ceramic breaks and it's uh, it's still stuck on the board, you've got to remove that and put it with it otherwise because that's where you know 99% of the value is. Um, well, we've got tiny little IC chips I wouldn't even bother with them but you know it's up to you uh, we do have a couple of capacitors here and they will be tantalum capacitors because they are labeled as a C even though they don't have like your positive symbol like normal black ones they are because they are um, a capacitor so if they were uh, um, labeled as an L it, it would be an inductor so 
um, you wouldn't worry about them. I'm pretty sure I got my terminology right. So yeah, because I know they are tantalum capacitors, because they are capacitors, there would be nothing else that they would be. So we've got three MLCCs. Obviously, uh, I'd imagine that these are magnetic, uh, but as I've mentioned previously, uh, even magnetic ones can have silver and palladium because uh, uh, some of them uh, still have the noble metal ones still have a trace of nickel and the nickel is what makes them magnetic so I've got a, a range of uh, MLCC's here so we'll just skim these with the screwdriver got my tub handy I always like to have a bigger tub for MLCC's because when I skim them I can just tip them and uh, and then finally here we just got two uh, memory IC chips standard ones just like on old school RAM or not semi old school so all I do is just skim along one side with the flathead screwdriver and jiggle them off and there we go two of them and like I said if, if you separate these they're a lot easier to sell there's a BGA uh, because people know what they then are it's a very uniform um, batch so uh, I, I, I pay a better price than I see chips for these separated alone and you'll probably get a better price if you were to sell online so there we go now we've uh, we don't have anything else these chunky little uh, square boxes pulse etc they're like little transformers they're not IC chips and then uh, it just depends on whether you want to go as far as trying to get the gold pins and so on. But uh, look, it's all about time factor. And so you can see these gold pins are pretty good. Um, half gold, half plated, half not. You know, uh, a quick way is to just cut them off like that with side cutters. And there we go. We've actually got pretty good um, mid-grade mid gold pins. I've got a, a batch of mid-grade gold pins here. You can see uh, there are some higher grade mixed in with this, but this wasn't my batch, so someone that sold them to me. But you can see uh, uh, silver and gold color, so that's, that's mid-grade. So we can do that, and in this case, uh, because these are quite easy might as well get the gold pins and uh, yeah, I do buy gold pins as well it's just uh, un unless you've got them separated from uh, a high grade mid grade and a low grade um, I, I you know it really I, it there's no real set price unless they're, you know, really uh, well sorted out. Uh, if it's all just mixed and stuff, you know, you're, you're most likely just going to get a mid-grade value, which is about, um, I pay about $20 a kilo, but I reckon uh, other, you know, gold recovery type guys would probably pay much better for mid-grade gold pins. Um, so there we go. So we've got a blank board. You can throw it into scrap steel scrap metal there is still base metals on this there probably is still traces of silver um, on this board um, if you can sell it any other way great okay so here's another board it looks uh it looks quite good it's a, a network type of card but it really doesn't quite cut it as a uh, it's very close you know this is to me it's more more of a, a you know a peripheral mid to high grade board uh, I've probably mentioned before mid grade and high grade here um, I pay the same price I used to have mid grade and high grade and there was a little bit difference in price but it just got too confusing so um, but this one would be a good one to depopulate we've got a little uh, extra card on there and you can see there's a gold band crystal so first thing I'll just take my gold band crystal off 
And yeah, like I said, th this board here is probably a little bit higher than uh, a standard mid-grade, but it balances out because sometimes, you know, we get mid-grade boards that, you know, are, are barely mid-grade boards. I'll show you one of them a little bit later. So here, obviously we want, number one is uh, our BGA, Gold Corner BGA. We've got tantalum capacitors, we've got flat packs, uh, memory IC chip, and uh, yeah, and and this card. So this card, I'll, I'll pop off if I can. Okay. So on this card, there's quite a quite a bit of very fiddly, tiny little things. Um, we do have these MLCCs, and they're the the pinkish type. Um, in most cases, they're non-magnetic, so they're the the real McCoy. And one over this side and as I mentioned it's a lot easier if you uh, it's very fiddly and time-consuming but it's a lot easier to sell if you separate uh, magnetic to semi-magnetic to non-magnetic so these ones are non-magnetic they tiny little stuck but that's probably because there's a little trace of nickel somewhere and these are, are very powerful magnets but generally they don't stick so there you go definitely palladium and silver on them uh, tiny little board uh, you know very fiddly to get these tiny little um, flat packs off but there is a bigger flat pack but it's still quite flat and hard to sort of catch on so once again I just get the flathead screwdriver and skim along the legs of three sides and that pops it up and I can just peel it away and there's a flat pack okay and the rest of this well me I'll, I'll just put this into mid-grade but for you it's up to you if you want to really fiddle to get those tiny ones otherwise it might not be worth it okay so that's left a blank spot there we'll get our BGA too easy and here's a perfect example where the plastic part has very common cracks off the top so this is probably you know more important than the base so you want to keep these so when you sell people uh, BGAs you know and they see just blank plastics like this you want to make sure that there's a equal amount of uh, plastic chips on top so you might want to keep the ones that you have complete separate and that way it will be easy to sell in smaller batches um, the big flat pack here I just use these monkey grips just jiggle and it's off really a split second uh, that doesn't look like anything and yeah and then okay we've got tantalum capacitors so I b buy tantalums and these yellow surface mount tantalum capacitors are uh, you know ve very common and very they stand out there's nothing else that really looks like this so they're 100% tantalum capacitors there we go got about eight tanties there that's done all right I'll get my um, memory IC chip and yeah you can go as far down uh, depopulating as you like that's just a, a regular IC chip I don't put these into the memory ones uh, you can they're similar but not quite I just throw it into ICs okay uh, tiny little uh, flat pack here but it's got Intel on, on it so Usually when they've got Intel written on the top, there's some kind of logic chip or something. They, they could be uh, good for uh, gold recovery. And again, for you guys, uh, if you're selling all this kind of stuff because you've got nowhere to sell your boards, um, yeah, well, every little chip adds up. So there you go, another flat pack. Um, okay. Uh, what else I'm going to take off this? So, just uh, one MLCC here, and there's 
a couple of little IC chips, just the very small ones. So really, really simple to take off. One mightn't have been an IC. Um, and then we've got a couple of more ICs up the top here that are thick enough to get a grip on. Okay, three more ICs. So this is, you know, this is a whole uh, idea is just to uh, increase your, uh, or to get some value from um, what otherwise you probably wouldn't be able to because you've got uh, nowhere to sell the boards. So there we've got some pretty good gold fingers. And these would go into a higher grade because they're fully plated gold fingers. If there's no uh, rubbish on them in the end, um, just get that off. So you can go as uh, put as much time as you want. All I would do just to save a bit of time, break it off like that. Okay, and so this one with the uh, the bit of plastic left on, you might want to cut that off, and you could put these pretty much into a higher grade uh, gold finger uh, gold pins, but they're not super high grade, so. Um, it really, de when I'm buying them, it really depends on the type. If they're really, really high grade, I've got an even higher price, but I don't normally advertise that price because it's just, I play it by ear. Sometimes people bring me uh, very, very vintage gold pins and uh, they're really, they really stand out because they're very orange. Okay, and so we've got the same thing again with these little uh, plugs here in this case the pins have, uh, are still stuck in there so this is a uh, it's very hard to sell uh, plugs with pins because it's it's really hard to determine how much value um, is in there because they're also paying for the the plastic and so on so um, but I would just put these in my personal thing. But uh, I only really recommend going for the gold pins, uh, the more difficult gold pins, especially from plugs and so on, if you're actually looking to recover the gold yourself. If you're looking to on-sell, you're not going to get a great deal of value. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. So, um, I got we've got a little uh, crystal. Okay. And most people that sell me the crystals will sell me uh, it complete like that with the legs and the plastic. But I prefer in my own personal thing to remove the plastic. But that's okay. That's only a personal thing. Okay, obviously we've got some pins here in the ports. Um, and once again, it depends how far you want to go. You're really putting in a lot of work here to get those little pins out. But if you're trying to maximise every bit of value, then that's fine um, you can do that but uh, here I can't say a great deal more um, that we can really take off so this will just go into scrap steel now oh sorry one more thing I, I missed uh, these obvious gold pins here on this one because this is a, a higher grade board higher than standard uh, standard mid to high um, they will have good pins So, yeah, as I said, th th these have got good gold pins in there. Um, but very hard to sell like that because still most of the dead weight is on this non-plated side. The board, the plastic, even some screws. So very hard to get a, a, a decent um, estimate on the value. But for personal one day I'll get into that all right so here we've just got a standard uh, CD or DVD board from a PC okay so pretty much every time you scrap out a PC you're going to get at least one DVD drive in there maybe two and so you can get some decent sized boards these days they're only a lot smaller but usually they've got pretty good chips so we've got four, uh, three flat packs here, one chunky one, two flatter ones. And, you know, aside from, uh, you know, if you wanted to go as far as taking off the capacitors, 
you can do that if you like. You also got the, the gold pins here. Again, only a personal thing. Um, but you might start off selling uh, IC chips and someone something uh, to someone local. And then you might say, hey, do you want to, you're interested in buying these gold pins? And you might find a buyer that uh, becomes like a regular or something. And you might sell him bags of uh, gold pins. You know, if you can sell it for more than, um, you know, than the time it takes to uh, take them off. Well, you know, you might get uh, three, four bucks a, a, a pound, something like that. Okay, so we've got the little flat pack so once again you can use all kinds of tools some people you know uh, they might want to use a chisel to make it just a wood chisel to make it uh, um, quicker but I find it's just as easy to skim three sides of a flat pack the real flat ones that I can't grab onto with the monkey grips there one two three pop it off there we go and we're done here other side okay we've got a, a memory the classic wind bond IC chip so once again keep that separate to regular ICs one side and jiggle it off and then we just got a uh, just an oddball IC that we'll just put that into normal ICs and there we go that's pretty much uh, depopulated pretty much everything I can get off it he is uh, probably from a yeah it's it's a modem board again very common for those that do modem boards not a great deal on them um, you know as I mentioned with these pins yep you got gold pins if you want to go that far uh, we do have one high value BGA and two uh, one flat pack and one memory IC so only three chips on this whole board <laughs> and this is why it's you know for those that can sell boards you're much better off selling the boards because uh, you, you're getting a lot more value than getting uh, these few chips even though this is a high value BGA chip it weighs virtually nothing and so they ta it takes a lot to uh, get some value. The only thing for the scrapyard here I see is a, a little copper coil that we can put into transformers right so we get a bit value there and then okay we've got aluminium capacitors you can put in the irony alley you might be able to put this whole board into irony alley um, once again these have got little copper coils I don't put these into transformers or anything because they're just too hard to recognize for the average scrapyard so uh, you know if you've got no other option that's all you can really do um, apart from you know if you want to spend time on these pins but for me um, it's it's quite a heavy board it's was would be much more valuable just selling it you do have these little tactile switches okay little push button tactile switches they got a tiny little trace of silver honestly uh, I know some people that have tried to uh, you know spend time to get the little tab of silver out of there but the amount of time I mean you spend the rest of your life going through enough of these just to get one ounce of silver that's worth 20 bucks you know so um, <coughs> they're there if you want them but uh, yeah okay so here's another case where there's not a lot on there um, to get any value and uh, you know it's a shame to not be able to sell this as a, a mid-grade board because um, yeah you're not going to get much out of this there is a gold band crystal oscillator um, okay so at least we got one little thing out of it gold band nice ceramic in there equivalent to a ceramic CPU now you might see the the edges here you got gold now these don't go as gold fingers you know like uh, like gold fingers because you might be able to see the difference you might not 
but this is this is plated okay this is gold flashed it's like spray painted there's probably this gold flashing is probably under this entire mask the whole board is most likely gold flashed yeah i can see you can see these little uh, circles so this green mask is on top of this flashing it's a very light very very light um gold uh paint <laughs> you know, for want of a better word um you can't take these off and put these into gold fingers like and expect to get the same price um you know for to get you know like gold finger value for this kind of stuff these board this these particular boards are quite thick and heavy and so um yeah i i will put these into mine because i will be recovering the gold from my gold fingers but if you're going to sell gold fingers um you don't want to put these in because your buyer will be getting ripped off because they're buying it by weight and they they're expecting gold plating stuff and this is just gold flashed so really there's nothing else i can really take off here so um yeah that was a bit of a dud board and that's what you're going to get you're going to get some boards that uh got a lot of weight and they would go as mid-grade board but they just got nothing to remove so it's a problem but look if you've got no other option well what do you do okay here's another board it would have been from some kind of uh network sort of switch little tiny little switch or some kind of maybe a big modem okay and yeah we've got two or three high quality bgas a memory ic uh regular and a flat pack we do have some mlccs there other side some more mlccs and that's about it so yeah okay so i'll take my is a, a the broadcom uh bgas and you know these ones are you know they're a little bit heavier so they're quite good value you know you're selling them by the pound or the kilo so the more weight the better obviously skim off our little memory ic regular ic and the flat pack there these are slightly chunkier so i can get a grip on them and take it off very simple uh, we've got a few crystals for silver recovery um you know my price is something like two dollars twenty a kilo and it's usually not worth buying unless there's at least a kilo because you know it's just some people bring me like a tiny little baggie of them and they barely you know register on the scales so you know what and what it's it's going to be like 10 cents you know uh so most people sort of say oh you can just have these you know and i say okay you know um but mlccs nothing else on this board apart from obviously you know copper coils again for uh tr as transformers and same deal same deal with the pins other side we do have some mlccs these ones have got the little numbering on, on top they're still mlccs so and and i'll just throw them in and the other option is uh <laughs> if you didn't want to uh you know depopulate and try and find buyers for depopulating you might even try just building up you know little piles of boards and say uh, and put them on ebay to find a buyer that will become a regular buyer local buyer so you might put these on say ebay craigslist gumtree and um as i mentioned probably the best place is to find you know people that are into gold recovery is on the facebook pages and hopefully you can find someone that's in your state in your local area uh, but even if you you know start trying to get rid of them um, say you might sell them in batches of 50 pounds or 100 pounds and just say 100 pounds of 
mid-grade or peripheral grade boards. In America, you'd say peripheral um, for gold recovery. Uh, try and keep the prices fair, like uh, look at board sort prices, etc., or, or my prices, and keep it around there, maybe a, a little bit more, add another 20% to uh, maybe pay for fees or just uh, you know just to give you a bit better and then um, yeah and pick up only so there's no postage involved and so they can come and pick it up and and that way um, that'll make up for the you know fees and stuff like that that you'll have to pay because you're going to have to add that onto your price so um, yeah pick up only and once you've got someone that's come and pick up boards for their own gold recovery, it's pretty good chance they're going to continue buying your boards. And so you, you won't have to um, depopulate. So maybe just firstly try to do that and, and, and see how you go. And then if you have no luck in selling boards, then start depopulating. And these are going to be obviously a, a lot easier to sell on eBay and so on. Um, and yeah, once again, especially on your gold recovery um, uh, pages on Facebook. So yeah, again, it's it's you know very common, a, a more a modem type of things. So I'll get rid of a couple of crystals, uh, and they'll also buy crystals and things, and you'll get better money um, for them from from guys that are, are wanting them to recover gold. And places like if you're listing on eBay. You know, you might want to start listing uh, a little bit higher or quite higher because there are people that want to um, recover gold from uh, electronic, you know, IC chips and so on, uh, but they don't have any uh, avenue of getting them. So, and they don't necessarily want to make a profit. All they want to do is um, just have the experience of gold recovery. Um, and so they will pay even pretty much what the gold that they would get out of the chip so these bgas you know you could uh you know you probably ask very good prices so look uh, look on ebay and see what you know if they're selling and what people are selling ic chips bgas flat packs and so on get a good idea and see what's actually sold not just what's listed okay so we've got a little card here these cards are very common in these kind of boards and they got um they're really good they've got uh, little gold fingers they're still only a mid-grade board whether on this card uh, on the board or, or not so yeah so really good gold fingers and um and we've got a high grade bga and under this steel plate probably got some more bgas Probably, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, not really, but we do have. Okay. Really good. A gold band crystal oscillator. These ones are a little bit odd. They're square in, instead of your standard rectangle. So that's a, a great little thing. And, you know, really, technically, it, it should be like a, a PCI card or a slot card value because... Well, once we've taken off that steel, it is quite a good value, but unfortunately, here, they only go as a peripheral board. So we've got our gold band crystal oscillator, the square style. We definitely want... Um, oh, there's actually another little one there, right? It doesn't matter how big or small they are, they all add up. And they're all as good as the next. There we go, gold band crystal. These are a little bit harder because you really got to have something to uh, wedge your board up against. So I'll just uh, use the end of this vise just to uh, knock this BGA off. So there we go. Really good, good value BGA, highest value for me. I said uh, I'm not sure I think I pay hmm, 65 70 bucks a, a kilo for them um, but you know here in Australia you could probably get uh, 120 a kilo on eBay and the gold fingers I just sort of crimp up and then break it off and there we go goes into regular gold fingers 
it's very much like uh, ram gold fingers and this board here too fiddly to get these little flat packs off but there is still gold recovery here so you know um yeah but uh i was going to say you could still sell these as a bit of gold recovery very light cheap gold recovery um but if you can sell these then you could sell the complete boards to a buyer so yep um bga gold corner oh i lost the top so I'll, I'll, I'll find that top <laughs> and see very common that they uh, they come off the top so really important to have both pieces when you're selling and like I said maybe keep two separate tubs for them one for complete one for uh, broken up bits so but it will still have the same value if you've got most of the contents okay so that was a memory standard regular so like i said these are very thin they're very almost identical to the memory ic chips but they're slightly different um some people put them in uh me i just prefer to keep them separate i'll get that flat pack easy once again copper coil for transformer done and then we've got another little transformer there so this is just one way to get value from otherwise not being able to do much with them you know uh, tiny little copper coils there all that up we'll be able to unwind this copper there we go the ferrite out and we've got a bit of copper it's all good a couple more I'll just put these aside until there we go so yeah so there's not really much else I can really show you on these mid-grade boards because yeah unfortunately there's just not enough to them you know here, here's an example where um it's, I mean, it's barely a mid-grade board because all this dead weight transformers and stuff like that, uh, this side is very dead weighty. I'm not sure what these little yellow things are. They're not um, tantalums, um, but it doesn't matter. And, um, yeah, again, we've got uh, some gold pins here, not a lot, and there would be gold pins under these plastic bits here. Whoop. And they're okay, they're only a, 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 a mid-grade gold pin, you know. But as I said, if you can find a buyer for these gold pins, you can break this whole section off and uh, can sell that. And you're not going to get much. You might get uh, four or five bucks a pound in the States. Um, this one didn't even have anything. So it was just this side. I'll put this into my own, my own things. This is uh, like when I retire, I might sit and fiddle and take out all these gold pins. But then again, I might not. I might say, oh, bugger it, um, and try and just sell the whole lot for a pretty cheap price. So here we've got. Um, uh, in this case, you know, if I remove all these IC chips, I could still get a low-grade board. But again, this video is not about that. It's all about trying to get value from your entire board. Now, but it is a quite an oldish kind of board. And the thing I, I notice here is you, we've got uh, plastic ICs, but we've also got ceramic ICs. And you can see this one has had the um, ceramic popped off. And so I'll show you the, the one above that. So it's, it's like a ceramic cap. You know, it's, it's an entire ceramic uh, IC, but usually when you go to take them off, the cap will pop off first. All right. Do another one just to 
get the whole cap off. So that's just a ceramic cap, and there's no bonding wires within this ceramic. It's just a cap on top. All the stuff is inside the IC chip, and this has got, you know, it, you know, you can actually, there's a silicon chip on top of that, but around the sides, you can, you can actually see gold around the sides, and there will be bonding wires running all the way through to every one of these legs. And I'll just show you a, a better example off the board. So as you can see there, you can see the, the silicon chip on top, but underneath that, it's all, it's all gold underneath there. And so these ceramic type of IC chips are, are really, really good for gold recovery. Like look at that, you can, you know, um, you can see all that, uh, that gold. And there will be silver, silver um, bonding wires as well. But uh, all through that, so you would, these would be treated as different to uh, regular ICs. Obviously, they'll be treated like a ceramic IC or just like you would treat a ceramic CPU. So I'll do this one later. So here, I got quite a lot of these the other day. Um, yeah, they've already got the, they might have been EEPROMs that are already missing. So still, it's a, obviously a, a mid-grade board. And um, it does have some more interesting things on there, like tantalum capacitors, the resin-dipped ones. And also these little capacitors, which are resin-dipped MLCCs. And so um, you'll often find ones, boards, where you'll get uh, quite a lot of them, but they're very squished in and stuff, so you have to virtually depopulate all the big stuff off the board in order to get to these little ones so um, they kind of break quite easily and that that's all that is to it but they are MLCCs and they're non-magnetic and so you get a lot of blue ones a lot of yellow um, all co colors red green pink so they're all MLCCs, and because they're non-magnetic, we know they're noble metal MLCCs. So they are a good value. You want to make sure you get, you know, all the value from them. Um, and these long yellow things, and there's a red one there. They're resistors. They're resistor networks. So it's a whole array of resistors. You may get silver recovery out of them, but... Uh, yeah, I think you'll find them pretty hard to sell, but, you know, again, if you find a buyer, I'll get these tantalums off, um, ask him what else he may, you know, he or she may want, and, uh, yeah, and so, there's another version of the MLCC, a bigger one, so, sometimes I'm a bit wary whether they are, these big ones are, or not, but, I put them in, because, at worst, they'll probably be, at least they'll be silver recovery. And so, these chips here, the IC chips, um, I've already tried with these. They're, they're quite hard to get off the way I would normally jiggle them off. So, in this case, I just run a screwdriver along one side of the legs. And so, just cut the, uh, cut the legs. And some people will will mention, oh, you should use a heat gun. Um, I don't recommend using a heat gun. Uh, firstly, they do use quite a bit of power. And secondly, whenever you, you're melting solder, because that's all you're doing, you're melting the solder so you can remove the chips. Um, the board itself has, you know, this green, and this also melts a little bit and starts bringing up fumes from the solder, fumes from the mask of the board, and you don't even know what the board is made up of. It could have uh, all kinds of nasties and bromine or uh, and arsenic and, and all kinds of things. So, okay, you could do it outdoors on a windy day for the fumes to sort of move around, but I, I still don't find that a safe option. And, you know, what's the point of, you know, uh, risking lung damage 
and brain damage for, for a few bucks worth of IC chips. So that's why I prefer to do it by hand. But even so, when you're breaking up boards and things off boards, you're also raising up fine particles of the circuit board and all that kind of thing. So it wouldn't be nowhere near as toxic as, uh, as uh, using a heat gun. Um, but, uh, you know, you still don't want to breathe that sort of stuff. So your best, if you're doing a lot of boards at once, you're best off just, just having your standard face mask and, um, just say you're not breathing in the, uh, particles, um, as much. And, uh, yeah, uh, even better if you've got a face shield, so the particles don't go into your eyes. Uh, so there you go. I'm just removing this little IC, and um, yeah, not a great deal. There are still these tiny little MLCCs in amongst these, but the only way to get to them is pretty much remove everything. Here's a bit of you know, you know some people ask me, oh, is that cold? No, it's just brass. It's just uh, <laughs> they're just brass. <laughs> um, There we go, so that got me to one more little MSCC, but uh, yeah, they're, they're very they're very soft, easy to break, so they really crush up. You've got to be kind of gentle with them. If you were depopulating populating with an air hammer, you wouldn't even find them. They would just virtually pulverize. All right, um, yeah, and so like this, once again, um, you know, regular mid-grade board, but there are a lot more of these MLCCs, resin dipped. And I'm at one stage I was, all my boards were they were blue. Now I'm on this stage of uh, all yellows. Um, so I just do that. Uh, I keep a very fine Torx screw to uh, get these things out but I'll just use this little flathead okay so a lot of these uh, flat packs that can that are removable in these little sockets they can actually be um, a lot of them can be really good for gold recovery uh, that's why I pay more for flat packs than just standard ICs so we've got uh, three removable ICs and they're just plastic but you still don't underestimate plastic to ceramic even though ceramic 99% of the time it's going to be gold um, in these type of ICs but uh, whereas plastic it's real hit and miss so I want obviously we're going to get the IC chips these ones popped off reasonably easy good and again don't worry whether they've got gold in them or not if you're selling them, they all sell for the same IC chips. Unless you separate plastic to ceramic, then uh, you really want top dollar for your ceramic ICs. And just these little MLCCs, I'll get one out the way. Sometimes I've got to get the IC chip off lengthways. Okay, so that broke up. Gives us a chance, yeah, and, and yeah, I can see a little bit of gold there, so. All right, yeah, so same deal with everything. Uh, remove the uh, little MLCs off. They're very fiddly, does take a lot of time. I try and remove all the ones that I can get to easy, but uh, it gets to the point, you know, you can spend 10 minutes on one board and uh, you know, I can have uh, 500 boards to depopulate, so that, that would be months. So these little dip switches, they always usually have gold-plated pins in, in them. Um, uh, I've said before, I put these in with IC chips because I'm going to recover and I'm just going to treat these just like uh, plastic ICs. But some buyers um, won't don't want these put in with IC chips so just for us uh, you know to play it safe keep these separate um, 
right? But I, I, I just put them in with ICs, but I'll try and uh, just get the top off to give you a look inside these dip switches. There we go. And so you can see all the gold pins in there. So, there we go. So in this case, I really should, shouldn't put them in with IC chips, but what the heck. Um, now we've got like a transformer again. Put that in transformers. A crystal for silver recovery. And as I said, oh, there's still a couple of ICs. And then, yeah, it's up to you whether you want to take these pins off. These kind of pins here that are uh, stuck to the board, that have got a little bit of plastic there. Um, when I used to really get into my pins, uh, if I wasn't using the air hammer, I would just uh, put a good size screwdriver at the edge. And sometimes I could get it off. In this case, I've got uh, loose little pins but like I said, I don't really worry about pins on board. So I'll finish this board off with the little MLCCs. Um, <coughs> so a board like this, loaded with uh, ICs. A lot of them are very tiny ICs. So you would use something like a screwdriver and see how they just kind of pop off. Right. I mean, they do add, like everything, they're very tiny. Whether they've got gold in there or not, well, it doesn't really matter if you're selling ICs. But generally, a board like this, that is all ICs, nothing, no dead weight, no copper transformers, no aluminium, no nothing. Blank board, it does have a heap. They're all um, uh, resistors, th uh, thick film resistors. Mostly there are MLCs with there, so resistors. They can be good for ruthenium and silver, but I reckon ruthenium recovery would be uh, quite complicated. Um, so in this case, th this isn't obviously a mid-grade board. This is a high-grade board, uh, like a very high-grade, like a telecom-grade board. Like I said, it's got no rubbish. It's all IC chips. It's even got a uh, EEPROM here. Nice... Uh, um, nice big uh, flat pack there so this is a uh, for the next video and then we've got boards like this so this is obviously a, a, a network type of board come from some kind of server um, thing um, but and it's it's reasonably good but the problem is that it's quite blank it's really it's not really easy to get uh, network grade or even server grade for this kind of board if it had more definitely uh, just a little bit more um you know and if it had a lot more if there wasn't as much green blank space you know it would go like telecom but in this case it's really debatable whether it's a um you know a peripheral board or whether it's a higher grade board i dare say we would probably get a higher grade board for this um you know but they're good for depopulating because uh you're going to be left with not much weight and you've got a couple of gold band crystals you've got a couple of gold corner ice uh flat packs and then your memory ic's um some tanties so yeah it's one of those not every board ha fits directly into a category and it's just really hard sometimes because people say oh what's this one you know you know, and, oh, uh, you know, uh, oh, well, this, here's a, a perfect example. Now, there's no way this could go for anything other than mid-grade board. I mean, it's all blank, okay? There are a couple of good bits on it, but it's just a mid-grade board. And in this case, it's even a shame to depopulate it because um, you're going to get much more value from selling it as a mid-grade board or a peripheral board. And that's why, you know, I say to you guys that don't have anywhere to sell, is try and find a buyer 
by by listing 50 pound or 50 kilos or 100 pound at a time on eBay, uh, pick up only, no postage, and so they'll come pick up. And then once you got those guys, they'll come back and they'll continue buying your boards, you know. And then uh, even sometimes you can put some uh, into higher grade and say, well, maybe I'll get a little bit more for them. And and that's the best way because like for me to depopulate this, I would lose quite a lot. Of value um, I'm better off just taking this gold band crystal okay so that's the best pound for pound that's the best value I might take uh, one of these tantalums the yellow one because it's easily recognizable so yeah I'll, I'll just leave this board because it would be an awful shame to uh, lose the value as a mid-grade only because I can actually sell it so but for the rest of you, well, if you've got no choice, but as I, once again, <laughs> I've probably repeated myself quite a few times. Sorry about that. But I'm just trying to get the message across that try and find a buyer online that will uh, continue to uh, buy your boards. Um, well, there's not really much more I can kind of um, add to mid-grade boards because it's just basically yeah it really depends on your situation and uh, if you've uh, got no choice well depopulate the whole lot and uh, if you do have a choice you know um, like selling them whether you're selling them to me or uh, anywhere else you are and you can't get them to me well then uh, yeah start depopulating or find that elusive buyer that will uh, take them off your hands you see like this board here is a, is a good board to depopulate you got a couple of uh, reasonably good flat packs of BGA here um, tantalums and um, some MLCC's and there's not much you know weight to it anyway uh, so in this case you you would get better value um, just depopulating but in other cases like I mentioned all transformers um, if you can get mid-grade which you can with me uh, you know you, you, you're much better off but uh, um, otherwise you know well you've got transformers you can always sell them to the scrapyard and there you go that's the mid-grade session uh, yeah not much we can do for you guys that don't have a board buyer nearby uh, but um, you know you can do pretty okay especially if you've got better than average mid-grade boards you can you know a lot of you know similar like this with no dead weight you can do um, a lot better than even selling your mid-grade boards to a buyer just by depopulating and selling on eBay or selling to me or wherever so that's low grade boards covered mid grade boards covered the next uh, part of this video or the stage of this video will be uh, high grade boards um, I'll mention it uh, when I start the high grade board video but motherboards whether they're PC motherboards laptop motherboards or uh, server motherboards they're not really worth depopulating at all well maybe laptop motherboards but server motherboards aren't really and really uh, PC motherboards are certainly not worth depopulating you've really got to find a buyer um, and you know and the only way to really depopulate this is to use an air hammer or something and rip into all the gold pins and everything because uh, as you can see we there's no um, prominent chip here that we can remove under heat, this heat sink. There is one BGA and it's a silicon chip BGA. So it, it's not even worth selling. Uh, same like these boards are, are quite misleading. You can see two surface mounted chips here. It's like an IC uh, CPU kind of chip here. A, a logic kind of chip. They're silicon tops. They're not worth anything. You can't sell, no one will buy them because there's very, very little gold recovery. Um, no more gold recovery than uh, a blank board. You'd probably get a bit of gold off the board anyway. 
So in these unfortunate cases, you, yeah, you've got to find um, someone to buy your motherboards. And motherboards are relatively straightforward. People know what they're getting. If they're into gold recovery and you list them in the right place, you could say, you know, 50 kilos of motherboards or whatever, and you will sell them. People will come and buy them. And yeah, if you do a, a pickup only, and that way you get to meet the person, say, well, can I supply you with my motherboards as I get them? You know, maybe every six months, send them, uh, give them a batch of motherboards. Um, that's the only option, to be honest. But we, you know, when you scrap out PCs, you do get value from, say, the CPU. Uh, but again, these modern CPUs, unless you can sell them individually on eBay as CPUs, like especially i3, i5, i7 CPUs, no problem. And that's where you'll get most of your value anyway. Uh, the heat sinks, things like that. And then everything else we get off out of a PC, power supply unit, hard drives and all that. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's it for uh, mid-grade boards. And we're going to go, yeah, next video will be high-grade boards. And then probably just really high-end boards that, uh, well, most scrappers probably wouldn't get anyway. But... Uh, well, just for the fun of it anyway, we'll uh, scrap a bit of both. All right, guys. Well, I hope that was uh, a bit of interest for you. Uh, once again, if you've got any questions or comments, statements, whatever, just uh, yeah, get in the comment section there. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a little bit hard to sh you know, show you depopulating from stuff that's uh, almost not worth depopulating for me. But um, yeah, you know, if that's the only option you've got, that's what you do much better than selling it just as circuit boards at a scrapyard for next to nothing especially when it comes to mid-grade and above mid-grade you know is should be worth three times more than most scrapyards would pay you anyway but just depends where you are in the world keep scrapping guys have fun i'll catch you soon